Welcome back, everybody. We've got ourselves a new gameplay update, 7.34, as we have a pretty big update, as you can see if I scroll all the way down. So today, I'm going to be talking about the biggest changes that I see in the patch, the biggest buffs and nerfs to heroes, items, everything. So I've got a list for you guys. I'm excited to share also what I plan to be playing and what to keep an eye out for. And I will be, anytime I discover something new, I will 100% be sharing it with you guys in future videos. First and foremost, there's a few really good quality of life changes for me or just like feels good changes with what they did to certain items and mechanics. First and foremost, these three items right here, Blood Grenade, they're now cheaper, but there's way less of them. Uh, refresher Shard now gives you the stats of a Refresher Orb which feels good to have it in your inventory. And then Smoke of Deceit, in case you accidentally miss somebody, means that if I use Smoke, and one of my allies who is not already smoked walks within 300 range of me, they now get smoked. So these are really nice, like, oops, preventions. So I really like these changes in terms of quality of life. The next quality of life buff that I really like is that Hand of Midas now has two charges, but it only starts with one charge, so it effectively is the same when you buy it. But the charge restore time went from 90 to 100 seconds, but what this basically means is that if you fail to Midas a creep exactly when it comes off cooldown, then it'll be charging for the next charge. It's only a nerf to Midas if you are on average using it within the first 10 seconds and never more. And also you have to think like when you're dead, there's no punishment. And the true meme potential is the Refresher Orb Midas gives you two charges. Oh, yeah! <laughs> we know the build. So maybe some Enigmas, maybe some Ogres with some second or third item Refreshers. It's worth considering. Maybe trying it. Also, like nerfs like this, Lincoln Sphere. Like, it was getting stacked on Medusa at the Major, just like four people placing Lincolns on Medusa. That's pretty boring, get rid of that. Heaven's Halberd just felt too hard to use or play against with BKB as like Ursa, TA, Troll Warlord. It just felt really bad to like have to preemptively BKB before you get Halberded. That, honestly, BKB has to be not total garbage. So I think that's a really nice quality of life buff there. And then they also made it so that all of the items that were previously bought to deal with illusions do more damage to illusions. So we're seeing Maelstrom, we're seeing Radiance, we're seeing Shivas. So uh, this is a huge quality of life buff in terms of killing illusions. But now I want to talk about the heroes that are affected by this the most. Obviously the illusion heroes. So I'd say by these changes alone, PL is the most affected. He is absolutely gutted, unplayable. These were items that you bought 100% of games when you were against Phantom Lancer. Doesn't matter like what your heroes are, somebody would have these items. Naga is a bit worse, like I'd say she is worse for sure, but these items don't ruin her. And she also has like pretty low cooldown illusion spamming, so it doesn't hurt her as much as PL, but it still hurts her. And out of all the three illusion heroes, TB is affected the least, I would say because in team fights, TB is much more of just a ranged right clicker than he is an illusion hero. Um, and these items don't counter him nearly as hard as they counter the other two. But overall, obviously nerfs to all three. So when we're talking about the biggest nerfs of the patch, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is Rod of Atos, no longer being all stats. And now what you give is just int and health, a much worse item because even though it's much cheaper, you don't want to rush items that don't accelerate your farm in any meaningful way. So I highly doubt we'll be seeing many Atoses at all, and especially for Universal Heroes, completely off the table now. So let's first go through my biggest nerfs for the patch, the heroes that I think will be affected the most significantly by this patch. So first and foremost is Bloodseeker. His laning stage was what made him good, and they significantly reduced the healing from his thirst. I think it'll be much easier to harass him out of lane now, um, thus removing a lot of his potency as a pick. Doom uh, is my next biggest nerf. His ult no longer applies mute, so I can just get doomed and then press BKB. Now, it does prevent me from being healed, so it's like a bit of a rework, and it is a lower cooldown, but being able to like BKB and like Hurricane Pike away from Doom is just so huge. So I think this is a massive nerf to Doom, and obviously he gets it back at level 25, but still, much worse. Enigma, his Eidolons can no longer be cast on units, so he no longer denies creeps in lane. I think this was like the entire potency of the hero, and then they also made it so it costs health on top of the fact that it costs mana, which I don't understand this. I feel like this alone was already a huge nerf, so I actually feel like Enigma is completely unplayable. Uh, I think Juggernaut, pretty massive nerf. I think what made him viable was that his lifesteal did not get reduced by armor, so he was effectively like satanic life stealing every time he crits you and that's just not the case anymore and i don't think these buffs are enough i might consider doing some like radiance octarine stuff based around the fact that you have like a lower blade fury cooldown 
but I think the old shard build was just bad, and the only reason Jug rose into the meadow was because of this level 20 talent, so I think he's pretty much in the dumpster. Morphling, his Ag Scepter got reworked. You can see that it's no longer yoinking people of their attack speed and stats. I'm not exactly sure how good this one is, but Morphling as a hero was largely viable because of the Ags. They significantly nerfed it last patch, and now they completely removed, like, the anti-carry aspect of it. I think it's really good for the hero. Like, I hate the fact that that's what that hero had become. So, overall, I do think this is, like, a nerf to a lot of what made Morphling strong previously. For all we know, he might be broken in different ways now. This change to Repel, if you remember Repel in the old days, where it gave BKB, it effectively had, like, an 80% uptime. Like, crazy uptime. And now Repel is definitely stronger. Like, it gives BKB and it gives strength and regen but it lasts for six seconds on a 45 second cooldown. So it's a BKB for Omni or a teammate that can be silenced. For me, this looks terrible. Um, I may be misunderstanding, but I don't think there's enough about Omni that makes this strong. I feel like this is horrendous. So I hope I'm wrong. Uh, maybe somebody at Valve behind the scenes knows what they did here, but I don't understand it. Pangolier. So his Shield Crash no longer provides percent damage reduction and now gives a barrier. So I'd say in the early game, this is slightly better. But in the late game, instead of reducing, you know, 70% of damage, you're going to get like an 800 barrier. Obviously, that's nice, but percent damage as the, late, as the game goes on is significantly more impactful. So I think this hero's late game got pretty much neutered. And then when we look at Lucky Shot, it no longer disarms. It just provides attack speed reduction. This is also very huge. So this is like obviously nice that it applies this, but this is like so much worse than this, right? So I think Pangolier is borderline unplayable. Next up is Tinker. He received several nerfs and they also made it that strength blink. Now, instead of doing a burst of damage, does damage over time after blinking on them. So they significantly nerfed his ability to just strength blink, strength blink, strength blink. So I think this hero is significantly worse. And then last but not least, uh, for my nerfs category would be Undying, probably the most annoying 5 position laning hero in, of all time. 4 less base damage, longer cooldown on level 1 decay, so significantly hurting him level 1. I think he's still going to be a decent laner, but if this hero doesn't like absolutely stomp lane, he just feels much less impactful. He still has the late game save from Tombstone. But overall, I think we'll be seeing a lot less of this guy. But now for the time that we're all excited for, which is the heroes with the biggest buffs. So we're going to go with the heroes with the biggest buffs, and then we're going to go to the heroes that I want to play. Mighty Minds, which is the three camps on the upper side of the dire jungle, now provides 7 HP regen. If you think about heroes that previously could jungle at level 5 or so, but would have sustain issues, I'm thinking like Luna, Sven, maybe the Illusion Carries... Uh, Slark with Dark Pact, but no ulti yet. It is a ton of HP. 7 HP per second is a ton. That is like a ring of health and a half, is what that is. So I think this is a huge buff to so many carries that would like to jungle at level 5 if possible. And meaning like their worst case scenario of a lane on Dire, specifically, is way less bad, right? So I just want to say that this is such a huge buff that it will impact the carry pool that I pick on Dire. Uh, specifically. When we're looking at items, the biggest buffs for me come down to Spirit Vessel effectively replacing Atos as the all stats item. Uh, it now costs 3,000 and it gives 12 all stats. So pretty much like any universal hero is going to be really strong with this. People are already talking about the fact that since Invoker got changed to a universal hero, spoiler already got changed, uh, that he will be very strong with this. Um, I want to try all types of heroes with this. I think Spirit Vessel is just broken like i think it's going to be bought one on each team every single game this item is absolutely insane urn of shadows already gave mana regen armor all that kind of stuff like it's just an all-around baller tier item i think this is one of the dumbest changes i've ever seen because i feel like with my dota knowledge that this looks like some of the most broken shit i've ever seen um in terms of neutral items there were a couple that i just like to say that i think are s tier now specialist array has been buffed like four patches in a row along with the fact that other ones have been getting nerfed i'm pretty sure specialist array is just the best tier two item now it's like insane it's just 19 damage to any hero and it's 26 damage for universal heroes just absolutely nuts. And then Havoc Hammer. One of the reasons that I used to not take this item is that most of the heroes that want it, Blink Strength Initiators, want you to be close to them. So instead of having you knock them away, it actually pulls them into you slightly. Dude, that's actually so good. So I think Havoc Hammer is significantly better um, on pretty much any Blink Strength Initiator. 
Um, it is significantly better. So heroes that I thought received some sick buffs. Bane. His Nightmare now does not get awoken by any damage dealt by Bane. That means you can Meteor Hammer that guy, Spirit Vessel that guy, Brain Sap that guy, and you also get bonus attack speed on a Universal Hero when he slept for six and a half seconds. So I'm going to be trying mid Bane, OD style, where you just rush a Meteor Hammer, potentially a Spirit Vessel, and then you eventually get the Ag Shard for AoE Wave Clear at 15 minutes. And I just imagine this hero is going to be an even worse version to deal with than OD. That's what I'm thinking. We'll see. Centaur received a really nice buff on his stun. It lets you move during the cast time of his stomp. Pretty much guaranteeing you'll hit people with it in lane if they ever walk slightly out of position. And then they also gave his Ag Scepter a nice buff, which makes him get the Stampede buff. It's a separate spell. So the biggest thing about Centaur that sucked is you couldn't really play the map without using Stampede to get away if the enemy ganked you. But this gives you options. So if you go like third item Ags, you can suddenly farm the map and have Stampede. Uh, next buff is going to be Dark Willow. Uh, the fact that her ulti can now be cast on an ally to do the same thing on the ally from 900 range. This solves the problem that Willow wants to be a backline support, but her ulti required her to be in the fray to do her damage. So I think this is a huge buff because you now can clearly be a backline support and not have to jeopardize your own position. Next up is Earth Spirit. Huge buff from my perspective, a little bit better creep clear. But Rolling Boulder is now like Storm Spirit ulti, where you are untargetable and invulnerable while rolling. So if we couple this with, like, the Octarine build we were seeing people do, where you go, like, second or th maybe even first item Octarine core, you're just invulnerable while rolling. <laughs> I actually think this hero might be beyond busted, so we'll have to see. Hero that I want to try, because he's a carry, is Gyrocopter. They made it so his Aghanim Scepter now it fires an additional target when Flat Cannon is active, which is a majority of the time. Flat Cannon got bonus range, and he got bonus night vision, because Flat Cannon only hits what you see. So, all of these are huge buffs, in my opinion, for Gyro. And even in lane, having, like, a little bit of slow resistance, you can pop Rocket Barrage to prevent people from chasing you. I think all of these things adding up. Also, Gyrocopter, now that I think about it, is a huge beneficiary of the dire HP regen. You can just go, like, a Basilius, and then be able to jungle pretty early without having to worry about taking damage and going, like, Morbid Mask. So... Uh, I specifically will be trying Gyro on Dire. Um, I do think the Invoker buffs are massive. Being a Universal Hero, you'll have to read them all yourself, but the Spirit Vessel build seems pretty nuts. I actually think the Luna buffs are pretty significant. I think Luna's biggest issue scaling into the late game was her inability to do single target damage and her inability to ever man fight if somebody got on top of her. So her Aghanim Shard has now been changed to a 6 second duration barrier of 20% damage reduction, which is a lot. And if the Glaives collide with an enemy unit, you're dealing 75% of her attack damage. It's a lot of damage if somebody's within range. Okay, so it can't crit. This actually makes Luna significantly better at man fighting people. If they're not within range of you, Luna feels pretty good. Pretty much all of her matchups against melee heroes feel way better now. And so I think this significantly increases her late game potency, and uh, I will be trying Luna as well, especially on Dire. Uh, Marcy, specifically, her sidekick is now permanent, um, and you heal each other with whoever you're sidekicked. You can read the details here. I think Marcy Io specifically will be incredibly broken, so keep an eye out for that. The next hero I'm super excited to try is the Aghanim Scepter change on Necro. It now is health decay is increased by 60% of Necro's current health regen. So if I buy a heart... Ooh, that's spicy. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is the build. Holy shit. This applies to bonus health regen your allies give you. So, I specifically got brought to the attention by Nusham that if you get eaten by Pudge, who gives you percent HP over time, and you have Ag Scepter, you just kill everybody. Because you're healing for a ton of HP. So, I'm going to be trying like an Ag's Heart Kaya Sanj build. It seems pretty nutty. And it's at least very fun to kill people really fast. And I love Necrophos, so heckin' love this hero. Uh, I want to try Nyx Assassin with the new Spirit Vessel. Um, potentially mid, maybe offlane. But he received some meaningful buffs. And the Spirit Vessel, I think, gave him an item that he wants to buy. That kind of just, like, has a nice progression. None of his other items gave him, like, the early utility that he needed. It may be a bit confusing, but PA's crit is effectively 20% now instead of 15. But you can't get it on the first hit in the last six seconds. So I think what makes PA's ultimate so strong now is that you can attack creeps 
and effectively, like, in lane, prep your crit and then just dagger the opponent for guaranteed crit. So I think PA's laning stage and overall damage output is significantly higher. And even though this buff is dispellable, she's just not a hero that gets initiated onto because she's constantly blurred. So I think that this is a huge buff to PA and her win rate in the new patch reflects that. Another hero with a huge win rate buff that also on paper looks sick is Ricky. They gave him a full agility gain, 12 base agility. Yeah, like his base stats are effectively the same with a little bit of extra attack speed, but, um, and he has less strength gain, but this hero just, I feel like what this hero was good at, he just now does it even better. So keep an eye out for Ricky. I'm not exactly sure if he's carry or mid, but he's definitely core. That's all I know. Maybe even offlane. Next up, my super excited one for me to try is Slardar mid lane. Why? Because Bash of the Deep now passively grants 10, 20, 30, 40 attack damage when you are in water. Keep in mind that your Slithering Crush does create a puddle for 7 seconds, so theoretically in the side lane you could stun somebody and you'll get bonus damage for 7 seconds. But I feel like combining the fact that Sprint also gives you armor and health regen passively and movement speed in the river, that if we do some 414 build, Mid, um, this hero seems like a freaking menace, to be honest. So keep an eye out. I will be trying it. I'll keep you guys posted if it is super broken. Make a more detailed video if it is. Really looking forward to trying TB with the Demon Zeal change. Uh, it effectively makes him way more powerful outside of Metamorph. You have like a miniature Metamorph outside of Metamorph. Um, so I definitely want to try this not only for like split pushing potential, but even in team fights. Troll Warlord, his shard is like significantly better now, um, in my humble opinion. And the quality of life of swapping back and forth between melee and range based on what axes you use um, seems like a really big buff to the quality of life aspect of Troll Warlord. So I do think he's significantly better and I'll be trying him out myself. Uh, Ursa. Pretty significant buffed in my opinion because this hero was absolutely owned by Nullifier which no longer goes through BKB. And then, specifically, my build that I was using, the Octarine Earthshock based build, instead of the Earthshock cooldown which kind of hurts, you get Earthshock Radius, which makes it massive, so you're now applying Fury Swipes to pretty much everybody in a teamfight every time you Earthshock. And then at level 25, you get two Earthshock charges, and the Enrage duration from those stacks, if you use them instantly. So, I want to be trying more Ursa for all these reasons, and he also got a little buff here. So, I think Ursa, as long as we can get out of the lane, I might be more likely to pick him on Dire, and just like, if I have a bad laning matchup, I can just go Treads and hit up the Neutrals. Same idea for him as the others. Vengeful Spirit, her Wave of Terror now reduces enemy attack damage. This is effective in lane, it's effective late game, you gave 10 attack speed to a universal hero, I think we'll be seeing a lot of Venge. I'm not sure if it's going to be core or utility support, but I'm pretty sure we're going to see a lot of Venge. I want to try Weaver with the new shard, it just means that when you come out of your Sakuchi, anything you've Sakuchi through gets hit by your Geminate. Um, it's similar to the old shard, but it's just a lot more damage output. It also synergizes with your 25 talent, so it gives you late game. And you just like one-shot creep waves with the shard. So I'm wondering if you get like a 15 to 20 minute shard somewhere in there. Like with like one damage item and a Geminate, you'll just kill the entire wave. So maybe even like a Dragonlance Deso kind of build. Like a Fabricant Blade Dragonlance Deso shard. And suddenly you're just dishing out massive damage. I want to try Witch Doctor with his pure damage change. Uh, definitely seems like a cool core. Paralyzing cast now like insta kills creep waves with this change So I think as a core this hero is significantly buffed and then Zeus we've been seeing it on quake for stream um, He learned it from hobo Harry. They've been doing the phylactery Kaya Sanj, disassemble into manta with the shard triple moon shard after that I think or maybe it's double moon shard hurricane pike. I think this hero is pretty sick um, watching them play it and then now they've even buffed this hero He does more damage pretty much period with his ult um, you just do more damage. So I'm gonna be trying Zeus out myself and uh, I'll keep you guys posted on how I feel about this. That's it for my review of 7.34. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more, for more videos on all the new stuff. I'll be seeing you guys next time.